to thank you so much for joining this 2019 Bio International Convention webinar on the basics of partnering. It's my privilege and pre pleasure to be your host today. My name is Willie Reeves, and I'm the Director of Partnering Products and Services at Bio, the Biotechnology Innovation Organization. A couple of quick housekeeping notes before we go on. Please note that the recording of this webinar will be distributed to all registrants within a few days, and it will also be posted, the video will be posted to our YouTube channel, so stay posted to Bio's YouTube and or to your email for that. Also, please note that if you use the questions panel in your GoToWebinar, you will be able to submit questions, and we'll have a short time for Q&A at the end of the webinar. So, let's dive right in. We are so excited to be returning to Philadelphia in June for the 2019 Bio International Convention, and we are, look forward to having attendees be able to take advantage of amazing partnering opportunities, networking opportunities, educational sessions, all of the pieces that come together to make the Bio International Convention the world's largest biotechnology event, and we look forward to seeing you in Philly. This year's theme is It Starts With One. One discovery, one therapy, one meeting, even just one idea, and you make that happen. Because of you, small local initiatives can have a huge and global impact. The innovative, really, really important advances in biotech, whether they're new drugs, alternative fuel search sources, or more nutrient-dense food, all of that starts with one, and we look forward to having you join us at this year's convention in Philadelphia. Before moving on, we'd like to give a special heartfelt thanks to our Double Helix sponsors, Amgen, Bristol-Myers Squibb, Genentech, Johnson & Johnson, Eli Lilly & Company, Merck and & Roche, as well as to our Helix sponsors, AbbVie, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Pfizer, and Sanofi. Thank you all, and thank you all of our sponsors for your continuing support of bio and bioconferences around the world. Now, important note. Registration, the early bird registration rates end April 12th, so if you want to secure that uh, discounted rate for registration, if you know you're coming anyway, you might as well go ahead and register. And remember, the convention access plus partnering rate is the one that gets you access to the bio business form, and we'll talk more about that here in just a few moments. So for today's agenda, we'll look at some reasons why you should attend and be excited for bio 2019. We'll do an overview of the one-on-one -on -one partnering system from BIO. We'll look at some strategies to help enhance your ROI from using the partnering system, as well as a live demo of the system, and we'll wrap up with a question and answer session at the end. And if you've just joined us, you can submit questions at any time in the questions panel in your GoToWebinar application, and we'll take those at the end of the webinar. Now, let's take a brief look at last year's BIO 2018 International Convention, which was a blockbuster in just about every possible sense of the word. We had over 18,000 attendees representing more than 7,000 companies, uh, from we had 150 international and U.S. public officials, and I must admit I am particularly excited about the fact that we secured a Guinness World Record for the world's largest business partnering event, and that was with 46,916 one-on-one -on -one partnering meetings and companies and individuals just like everyone on this webinar made all of this happen. We also had an amazing array of sessions and programming and company presentations, speakers, exhibitors from all around the world and more and we're looking forward to bringing the same energy and the same excitement to Philadelphia in 2019. Now, we do call it the Bio International Convention, and you might wonder why. Well, as you can see here, we have representation from nearly 70 countries, almost every single state in the United States, and a whopping 39% of our attendees are from outside of the United States. We really look forward to providing these opportunities for cross-border alliances. If you're looking to expand your R&D operations abroad, anything like that, you've got an amazing global representation of senior leaders and BD leaders in the industry and investors from around the world. We'd also like to thank our international delegations for their continued support, especially our top 10 and returning delegations that you see on screen. 
We were very excited just recently to announce our Tuesday keynote speaker, Siddhartha Mukherjee. He has been named one of Time 100's most influential people. He's the author of The Emperor of All Maladies, A Biography of Cancer, which was the winner of the 2011 Pulitzer Prize in General Nonfiction. In his latest work, the New York Times bestseller The Gene, An Intimate History, was recognized as one of the most influential books of 2016 by the Washington Post and the New York Times. And I've actually heard him speak before. You're really in for a treat. And thank you, special thanks to Johnson & Johnson for sponsoring our great keynote this year. Now, this year's program includes lots of amazing educational tracks, including some of our most popular tracks, like business development and finance, infectious diseases and vaccines, and oncology. We also have two new tracks this year, highly prevalent chronic diseases and patient advocacy. If you'd like to view the full educational program, please visit mybio.org, and you can check that site regularly to see the latest and greatest updates. Next week, by the way, registered attendees will be invited to log into the MyBio platform. Now, that's different than Bio 101 Partnering, and that will allow them to start building out their personalized agendas, and you can favorite your sessions and speakers and companies that you're interested in seeing. Now, we're also very excited. You can tell there's a lot of excitement with the BIO 2019 convention. We're also very excited for a fireside chat featuring chairman of the board and CEO of Merck, uh, Mr. Kenneth C. Frazier, as well as an FDA town hall with Peter Marks and Janet Woodcock. So we certainly hope that you will take advantage of the variety of great educational opportunities available at the 2019 convention. But it can't be all work and no play, as it never is at a bio-international convention. So we're looking forward to having the Monday welcome reception at the Reading Terminal Market. It's one of America's largest and oldest public markets, and since 19, excuse me, 1893, uh, has been housed in a National Historic Landmark building. It's got a really, really great array of local food and baked goods and cheeses and lots of other things. I personally love going there. It's conveniently located just right across the street from the Philadelphia Convention Center, so be sure to drop by throughout the week if you need an afternoon pick-me-up. We're also looking forward to having our Wednesday reception at the Met Philadelphia. We've got an exciting evening planned for you and plenty of fun surprises in store, so be sure not to miss these two great events. And many thanks to sponsors of both of these receptions. Now, if you are a startup and you meet some of these special criteria here, we would recommend that in the next uh, 24 to 36 hours that you apply for the Bio Startup Stadium. This is a really, really fantastic opportunity that allows uh, startups and emerging companies to engage with a panel of judges to do a six-minute pitch um, and have a panel of judges. There are 12 subject matter experts from the advisory committee, and you're really able to refine your pitch and uh, have a lot of great benefits along with a reduced startup pricing from the regular partnering registration. So don't hesitate, apply today because the applications close on tomorrow, April 5th. Another great opportunity at the convention is the uh, opportunity for company presentations. And whether your company is uh, smaller or larger, it can increase your visibility in the partnering system. You're able to pitch your company's story and pipelines and objectives to a wide audience. There are 13-minute presentations from a podium like you see on screen, and you can explain your organization's objectives and take some time for Q&A. The company presentations are an amazing opportunity to get face time with people that are interested in your particular therapeutic area, the indication that you're working on, your product. Meet those folks right there and then set up a partnering meeting with them in the partnering system minutes later so that later in the week that you can continue that networking. And in case you are wondering, company presenters tend to receive about twice as many media requests as non-presenters and schedule twice as many meetings. So it really, really ups your visibility within the convention. Now, let's do an overview of the Bio 101 partnering system. First off, what is partnering? Maybe you're new to convention. Well, let's take a minute to uh, talk a little bit about it. So partnering meetings are 30-minute meetings that happen uh, over three and a half days if you're a business forum participant, or three days if you are an exhibitor. They take place in either the business forum or on the exhibit floor. And here in a few moments, we'll look at a map laying out exactly where those items will be in the convention center. 
You set up these meetings using the Bio 101 partnering system, which is very easy and intuitive to allow you to drill down uh, to all of the very specific criteria that you may be looking for in another company. And Bio schedules the meetings. We have an algorithm that does this in the background so that you can arrive to the convention center with a plan and not have to scramble around at the last minute trying to uh, look through business cards and figure out phone numbers. Now, what happens at partnering meetings? It's a great question. First, investors, buyers, and licensors are looking for technologies and services and products, looking for other companies. And on the opposite side, investment seekers, out licensors and buyers, are pitching their technologies and products and services. And of course, down the road, should things work out, you can uh, have some deals. Can you make a deal? Can you make a biotech deal? Well, one-on-one -on -one partnering from bio makes that so much easier. Now, very important slide here. Let's talk about the two types of partnering available at the Bio International Convention. First is business form partnering, which is included with the Convention Access Plus partnering level of registration. So if you want the, this is our premium registration package, and if you're looking for that, you'll want to make sure to select Convention Access and Partnering when you register. Partnering meetings for business form attendees are held starting Monday afternoon and going through Thursday. And the meeting locations are either in a booth in the business forum or a meeting point or on the exhibit forum. And we'll talk about all those terms here in just a few minutes. Now, if you're an exhibitor, uh, that is included for exhibiting companies. You get access to exhibitor booth partnering. The meeting times follow the exhibition hours. They just start about half an hour after the exhibit hall opens on Tuesday through Thursday. And the meetings take place either in your own exhibit booth or in another exhibitor's booth or pavilion. So basically the differences are access, meeting location, and meeting times. Um, but it's the same system. Both exhibitors and business form attendees have access to the Bio 101 partnering system. Both can access the same companies and send them meeting requests. So two different types of access for one great partnering experience. Now, there's a lot on this slide, I know, so we're going to walk through each of the pieces individually, starting with partnering and moving to some of our other hot zones at the convention center. First, a partnering meetings will take place in a couple of different areas. Most meetings will take place here in Hall F, which is on level 100 of the convention center. If you are a sponsor or if you're meeting with a business form sponsor, then that meeting will likely take place upstairs, level 200, in the uh, sponsor area, which we call the sponsor square. Now, if you happen to be meeting with an exhibitor, um, exhibitors with, me with meetings, those will take place in their exhibit booths or in their pavilions, so that just depends on where they are located in the exhibit hall. And if you see that you have a meeting on your schedule that says it's at a meeting point, it's not a general term. It specifically means meeting tables inside the business forum, and those are going to be upstairs here on level 200 inside of the sponsor square. Also, if you're looking for customer service, if you've got questions about partnering, need a meeting rescheduled, anything like that, there are two customer service desks where we will be happy to help you out. One is here inside the sponsor area, and uh, that one is going to be accessible to exhibitors as well. And then downstairs in Hall F, exclusively for business forum participants, there will be a second satellite partnering desk. Now, one quick note. If you have someone, if you have an assistant or you're preparing a separate schedule that you're going to print out and you see the information from your Bio 101 partnering system that has your meeting location, please don't delete any of the letters or the numbers. I promise every single one of the letters on there in the location means something. And it will all make sense when you get to the uh, convention center. We have lots of signage and helpful directional folks to help you find your way around. Outside of partnering, there are lots of other popular zones as well. You've got the innovation zone of the startup stadium that I referenced earlier, contract services zone, bioprocess zone, and on level 100, there are loads of super sessions and educational sessions and courses going on. And it's easy to get between all of these, and we have a handy-dandy algorithm that minimizes your walk time between your meetings. It works best, though, if you start early sending your meeting requests, so we certainly encourage you to do that. Now that we've looked at where partnering takes place, let's answer the question of when it happens. First, for business forum participants, partnering will open up at 12.30 on Monday, running till 7 p.m. that evening. Tuesday and Wednesday, it will go from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then Thursday, things will close down at 4.30 p.m. For exhibitor booth partnering, the exhibit hall is not open on Monday, but it will start 
Partnering will start at 10.30, running through 6 o'clock on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then ending at 4.30 p.m. on Thursday. Special note here, we've added more partnering time slots, both for business form and exhibitors. So now there are 76 possible meetings per person for business form and 42 for exhibitors. That is 38 and 21 hours respectively, tons of partnering. We do manage to have some attendees who fill up every single one of those time slots, plus breakfast and lunch and dinner meetings. So it is all possible at the Bio International Convention. However, we do advise you to eat because that is good for you. Now, a couple of important dates. The Bio 101 partnering system opened on April 2nd, so if you've not yet received your credentials, please uh, check your junk mail or spam filter. You'll get those from biopartnering at bio.org within a few days of registration. April 12th is the early bird registration deadline, so if you want to get those lower rates, make sure to register by then. If you are an exhibitor, please be sure to submit the number of meeting points that you'd like to have by April 23rd. And we'll have another webinar, the advanced webinar we like to call Partnering Power Tools, coming up on May, on May 2nd, and uh, you will receive a link to that as well, or can check it out and register at convention.bio.org. Meeting scheduling for partnering is going to begin on May 14th, and then of course the International Convention itself will be on June 3rd through the 6th in Philadelphia. Now, let's look at some partnering strategies to maximize your ROI. And this will all make sense and we'll put it in context as well with our live demo. First are the five steps to partnering. And these are very, very important. Pretty simple, but very important here. First, you want to create or update your company's profile. If your company has come in the past to the BIO convention or another event, BIO will import your profile automatically for you, but make sure to go through. If you, maybe you have assets that are, you know, they were phase one last year, now they've moved into phase two or something has been knocked out or you need to update some news, make sure to update all those items in your company profile. Fill out as much information as possible. This is what makes you searchable, so it's really important to be intentional about the content that you include. Just like Google, the more keywords you have, the more searchable that you are. You can put therapeutic areas of interest, list your financials, assets, services, market products, definitely list your company type. There are so many different things that you can put there to help others find you. Step two is to update your calendar availability. This is a very important and occasionally overlooked step. The partnering system does not have access to your private Outlook calendar to read when you're available. Uh, and for that reason, because that'd be a privacy issue, for that reason, make sure to update your availability in the calendar in the partnering system to tell the system when you're available to take meetings. Step three is searching for potential partners, looking through other companies and sending them tailored meeting requests. So we have an advanced search tool that we'll look at here in just a few minutes. There are lots of powerful tools there that I'm excited to share with you. And you can also combine those searches across filters. There's tons of ways to narrow down and find the companies you're looking for. Step four is actively managing your message center. So message centers are shared across everyone in a company profile, sort of an equal opportunity access there. So you'll want to log in regularly, make sure that you're reviewing your incoming requests and accepting those so that they can get scheduled. And then fifth, this is really a bio step, bio will schedule accepted meeting requests with mutual availability. So of course, for everyone that's participating in the meeting, there has to be uh, the same time slot on the same day that everyone's available, but bio sends out a variety of helpful notifications that if there's not mutual availability to help you figure out how to get those meetings scheduled. Now, a few meeting request best practices. First is to polish your profile. You want to add as much info as possible to help other companies find you. If all you have listed on your profile is your company name and your country, that's all anyone can search for you on, unless they come across you in the search while scrolling through. So make sure that you've included as much information as possible. We recommend that you start requesting your meetings early. The earlier that you start off, the better that you're likely to do. Begin four more weeks before the convention. The next step is make sure you're getting to the subject of the matter. And we're going to talk more about this in just a moment. But you want the subject line to, of your meeting request to draw in that other company and make them want to open it and accept that meeting request. Along with that, you'll want to make sure that you're targeting your meeting requests. 
please avoid copying and pasting the exact same message to loads of different companies. People can tell. So the more that you have targeted and you've reviewed that company's profile and said, wow, this is a technology that would be great, or I think we could uh, help this company commercialize in Latin America, they're interested in that, mention those things in your meeting request to show that you've done your homework. And finally, follow up. If you get close to the convention and a meeting request doesn't have a response, that's okay. Don't hesitate. Don't panic. You can just send a quick reply only message to the company to remind them to accept the request if they think that it would be a good match. Now, and I hate to beat a dead horse, but this is very important. Please customize your subject line. If you use this example on the left, imagine that every email in your inbox were titled email. You'd have no way to differentiate them. You'd have no impetus to want to open any of them because they all look the same. It's exactly the same thing if you send all of your meeting requests titled meeting request. We know it's a meeting request, but why are you sending it? So again, customize that subject line to the receiving company so that they are more motivated to open. Now, to all of these points, let's look at a very, very quick case study here for Bio 101 Partnering. First, looking at a, a private biotech company here. Basically, the more requests that you send earlier using different subject lines, targeted messages, you're going to have more meetings. You can see a really big increase there, whether you're private or public. So again, log in early, check back often, follow up, and target, target, target. If buying a house is about location, 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 then writing a meeting request is about customization, customization, customization. And I'm only sorry that that's too many syllables to sound like a nice little phrase. Quick note here that the Bio one-on-one -on -one partnering system is now open. And as a reminder, you will receive your credentials from biopartnering at bio.org within one to three business days of registration. In case you're wondering why it takes a little bit of time, that's so that we can uh, verify company relationships and make sure that no one that's registering with a Gmail address, for example, is getting access to your company's private information. So we take privacy and security very seriously here at Bio. All right, now let's switch over to do a live demonstration of the Bio 101 partnering system. And when you go into the system, the first thing that you'll see is the home page. And let's just walk through each step here. Throughout the system, you'll always see this dark blue navigation bar at the top to help you get around very quickly to the different sections. And on the home page, in the left panel, you have an overview of your company's profile. So you can see how complete your profile is, and then view information for each of your colleagues that are participating in partnering as well. Here in the center, you can see how many available time slots that you have for partnering meetings. And there are some easy options to download or print your calendar or your company's calendar as well. Here in the third panel, you can see an overview of the number of meeting requests sent. And as we get closer to convention for each company, these numbers uh, for some companies will run into the hundreds over time. So you can see an overview of your message center activity here. And in these side panels, uh, which are sometimes overlooked, they've got great information. We have a couple of uh, video tutorials. PDF tutorials and things to help you learn how to use the system if you're not familiar, as well as customer service information and a reminder of some of those best practices. We also have some web handy webinars here that may help you uh, learn how to pitch a little bit better and continue building your biopharma partnerships. Now let's go to the profile section. When you go to the profile, you will see your own company's profile. So I'm viewing BIOS profile here and all the information that we have input. You're going to want to be sure to include your company type. Also very, very important are your brief description and description. If you think of the boxes where you're going to put the most information, that will be the description field here. And the brief description is important because when you're searching, which we'll see in a few moments, this line of text is going to appear immediately, so it will help people get a quick sense of what your company is about. You can also input your company's objectives, update any news that you may have here, and there's a licensing objective section as well to see whether you're interested in in licensing, in licensing or out licensing opportunities. Now again, don't just take five minutes to copy and paste some info in here. What you write in this profile is what makes you searchable or not. So along those lines, you can also specify therapeutic areas of interest and these uh, trees as we call them go down very, very, very deep to include a whole host of different indications. 
You can also include financial information here, as well as contact information. We most recommend that you include your company and a state if applicable at a very minimum, and of course your company's website to make it easier for others to view what you have on offer. Here in the middle, you'll see a section for assets, services, and market products, and these are all very powerful tools as well especially in the assets section here and one good thing to note is when you are putting in your search terms when you're filling out your profiles you may want to include both abbreviations in your descriptions as well as the full name so for instance one person may search on NSCLC uh, and another person may search for non-small cell lung cancer so using both the acronyms and the full terms will be helpful to maximize your exposure on the right side, you can input management information for your company if you wish, and you can also view information about the other colleagues from your company, as well as edit your notification preferences with this little edit pencil here. One important piece is to make sure that your company profile is published. By default, everyone's profile is published, so only unpublish if you need to go back and verify some information, and then make sure that you go and publish that, because otherwise you won't be searchable and publicly visible in the system. Now let's take a look at the search section. So right now there are about 1,200 companies participating in Bio 101 partnering, but this number is going to grow significantly in the weeks leading up to the convention and even on site. Here you're able to do a basic search, so you could type in a basic term like oncology or immunology. You can view all of the different companies that are participating. Now by default, the companies that have most recently updated their profile are registered or at the top. But if you click the little sort button here, you can also sort alphabetically uh, or by some other different ways of sorting as well. So let's say that you are interested in a particular company. You can scroll through. Let's check out their company type. All right, I see a description, what they're interested in. Here's a bit more information about them. And you can also include on your profile PDFs, videos, pitch decks, one pagers, all sorts of great information that will be visible to others that will help them understand more about your company. In this section here, you can see if you've had prior meetings with that company, request a meeting with them, make a note, bookmark them, or print that company's profile as well. Now, there are a few other very important search tips here, and for those, let's take a look at the advanced search. So not everyone, unfortunately, uses the advanced search, but I would absolutely advise you to. There are a lot of very powerful tools, and many of the most successful partnering companies with the most meetings do a lot here in the advanced search. So, for example, first you can search across all of the different tabs for companies, delegates, assets, market products, and services. So looking at companies, you can drill down by uh, what company types are you interested in? Do you want someone who's seeking in licensing or out licensing opportunities? What are the therapeutic areas and indications? And going on and on and on down. You can also search for investor specific criteria in case you are looking for investment. You can do similar things in the other sections, and I'll just highlight quickly here the assets section. So let's say you are you know, looking for particular types of antibodies and they are at a certain stage of development and you're looking for a company that is from in Japan, for instance, you can go across all of these tabs and combine the different company types and asset types and so forth to get a really, really filtered, detailed list. So I very much encourage you to take advantage of the advanced search. And one particular question, customers often ask, I wish I had the ability to see just the companies that have registered in the last week. Our process at my company is that I log in every Monday and look at the meeting requests, but I don't want to sort through all of these hundreds or thousands of companies again. Well, that feature is right here in the advanced search. If you go to the company registration date, you can put in the specific time that you're interested in. So if you have, you know, check every Monday or check every Wednesday, you can put that in here and just see the new companies. This feature will save you loads and loads of time. And you can also export your detailed search results or the entire list to an Excel spreadsheet that makes it easy for you to look at offline. Now let's go over to the calendar section. So here, a couple of things to notice. Starting at the top left, 
one thing to note is that the calendar is kind of another equal opportunity area, like everything within the partnering system. So you'll be able to uh, see the calendars of all of your participating colleagues who are participating in partnering. So here you can control your calendar for each of the different days that are going on for the convention for partnering. And the most important point here, your availability is going to start as completely unavailable on every day, so it'll be all red. What that means is that the system needs you to go in and tell it when it can schedule meetings for you. We can't read your mind. We're working on that. It's coming maybe one day, but until we get that feature, you'll need to go in and mark your availability for meetings. If you want to be available the whole day, just use this button here, and you can select the entire day all at once to be available for partnering meetings. Now, at the same time, on the right side here, we have our great sessions and education topics. So you can view all of the different tracks that are available, like those different session tracks that we discussed earlier in the webinar. And you can see what's going on in a uh, particular area on a particular day. So make sure to take advantage of this tool. Let's say that I'm interested in this particular session and I really want to go, so I'm not going to make myself available for partnering. You can add and remove these things very easily from your calendar. Now, let's say, for instance, that you're arranging a couple of outside meetings or you're planning on meeting a friend for coffee. You can mark those things off using the new personal event button. Just put in the date and the time. Enter a quick title here, meeting Steve, meeting Jane for coffee. And it will also ask you if you want to mark that time off so that you're not available for partnering. Once you are beginning to get your calendar firmed up, you can certainly print that if you like, whether your individual or your entire company's calendar. And you can also export it into a variety of great formats. One quick thing I'll mention here is that as partnering meetings are scheduled, and again, meeting scheduling begins on May 14th, you will begin to see those meetings appear automatically in your Outlook calendar, as long as you have one that same setting in your notification preferences, which is set by default for everyone. If you want to import them into, let's say, Gmail or something else, you can do that with this ICS item here. Now, let's go over to the Message Center, and for that one, so that we have a little bit more meat to show you, I'm going to actually go to BIOS Message Center from the 2018 Partnering System. 2018 convention last year, Guinness World Record winning in Boston. All right, so as you can see here, there are... Um, Lots of meeting requests that your company may be receiving or may be sending, and you can review those very easily here. You can narrow down by incoming or outgoing. Just check out your unread messages, or for example, look at the meetings that have been accepted but haven't yet been scheduled. Very important to note here is that uh, in just a couple of differences, you won't see a reschedule button. Bio does all of that for you in the background or if you come to the partnering desk. But you can edit your participants on the meeting. So let's see that you have a colleague. Maybe I want Arden to join this meeting. I can just click here to add her and then save those changes as long as that person has the mutual calendar availability. And you can also see the participants from the other company. It's very easy to read. Reads just kind of like an email or a text message. You can see what all the latest and greatest updates are for your meeting. One handy feature that some companies find valuable is the ability to tag particular meeting requests. So let's say that you're tagging by type of company. So maybe you create a biopharma tag and you're going to attach that here. So then you can go and filter by that specific tag later to find the things that are most helpful for you. If you, let's say, have a uh, requested meeting somewhere, so that's one that hasn't yet been answered, and you want to write another message, maybe you want to follow up and ask the company if they're interested in meeting, or you want to provide uh, an email address to send a non-confidential deck, you can do that without changing the meeting status by just clicking the Reply Only button here, enter in your message, and then click Send Message, and you'll be ready to go. So the Message Center is really where a lot of the um, magic happens, so you'll want to make sure that you're logging in regularly. This little dark gray bar over here means that a message is unread. And the more frequently that you log in and check your meeting requests out and make sure that you're accepting them regularly, the faster and sooner that your partnering meetings will begin getting scheduled starting in mid-May.
If you want to get a quick overview of how your company is doing, you can see a, a dashboard here of all of your different meeting requests so that you can get a quick high level, uh, high level overview in case you need to provide an update to your management group, for instance. Another quick item is that you're able to export your message center as well into Excel so that you can manage that very easily. Other quick things that you can do in the system are bookmarking companies, delegates, assets, all of these different areas. Maybe your team wants to review these as a group. You can bookmark very easily. And you will also be able to edit your notification preferences. Now, mine look a little bit different than for uh, a, an attendee by default, but you'll want to make sure especially that you have on your uh, iCalendar updates is what it's called here. Basically, that's the Outlook synchronization. Note that you're going to receive a meeting request email by default for each new meeting request that comes to your company. So one very important point is that the Bar 101 partnering system operates on a company-to-company -company basis. So let's say that you have a biopharma company A and you know that Betty is at that particular company. When you're writing your media request, you can certainly feel free to search for that company and say, Dear Betty, and, and uh, insert your message there. But do note that everyone that's participating and partnering from that company will be able to review that request. And the reasons for this are a couple of fold. One is that sometimes People from a particular company will have one or two designated contact people managing all of their meeting activity for them. So if you only sent the request to one person and no one else saw it, that request might easily get overlooked. And this also increases the collaboration so that people in perhaps different departments or teams from within the same organization are able to see the meeting request, triage them most effectively, and figure out who the best people are to participate in that particular meeting. That's the quick overview of the one-on-one -on -one partnering system. If you ever have questions, you can always go to the side panel and you'll be able to see some information there. Or you can, of course, email biopartnering at bio.org. All right. Now, if you have any questions, this is the time for our Q&A period. So please use the questions panel in the GoToWebinar, and you'll be able to submit questions there, and we'll be looking forward to answering those here in a few moments. One question, will these slides be shared after? Yes, these slides and the video will be made available within a couple of days after the presentation for everyone who has registered. One question here, are networking meetings in the innovation zone different from the others you described? Great question. So one quick difference is that the partnering meetings that happen, some of those may take place and be scheduled in the innovation zone if you're meeting with one of those companies. And those are similar to other Bio 101 partnering meetings that may be scheduled. But there can be a variety of other receptions that happen in some of these zones and pavilions. So you'll want to look at that specifically. Ooh, fun question here. Does your scheduling software account for time to travel between meetings? The answer is yes, Linda, it does. So when you begin to have your meetings accepted and they begin to get scheduled, our algorithm, we have a bunch of different zones. It's a whole thing. We take lots of pains to make sure that we can minimize that walking time for you. Occasionally, you may have to go a little bit farther. Let's say you're meeting an exhibitor that's on a different side of the hall. But for the most part, uh, about 90 plus percent of our meetings have a three minute or less walking time between them. Can more than one person have access to the partnering profile? Uh, the answer to that is yes. So for every company profile, uh, that's profile is going to be shared among all of the participants that are registered for partnering. So everyone would have access to that profile. Let's see here, a few more questions. Is the availability calendar per company or per registrant? For example, my company has four people attending. Will all four of us share the same calendar or can we each have our own? Great question. You can each have your own. So as I was demonstrating earlier in the calendar, if you click that drop down at the top, you can select yours or your colleagues. Each person that is attending is able to have their own custom calendar. You can have completely separate meetings from your colleagues or if you'd like to collaborate, you can and share the same calendar as well. Question here, is there a separate registration for the one-to-one -one partnering site? So if you're interested in business form partnering, as we've discussed, that's going to be the convention access plus partnering level of registration. So you want to make sure to select that one. If you are an exhibitor, then uh, each exhibitor will receive an exhibitor partnering contact account as well.
but not not necessarily a separate registration but if you're getting convention access make sure to add that plus partnering part on there as well can I forward the presentation slides to someone else to view? Sure. We love to share information here at BIO, and we'll be happy for you to share this info with perhaps other colleagues or others that may be interested in attending the convention. Is there a BIO app for phones? Great question. So there are two different mobile applications that you're able to use for the BIO International Convention. One is the BIO one-on-one -on -one partnering app. And it's primarily intended for on-site purposes, so it allows you to view your schedule partnering meetings. You can cancel meetings in there and view your calendar and view all of your programming. It's not the full system. because There's a lot to pack inside of a four or five inch screen, but it will help you get around once you are on site. Secondly, there's also the MyBio application, and that website, MyBio.org, as well as the MyBio app are available for free to everyone. The partnering app is also free, uh, so MyBio will allow you to go in and view some more detailed information and putting your calendar together. That's an especially useful tool if perhaps you're not participating in partnering so that you can see all of that programming information. If you are, let's see here, if you are taking meetings in your pavilion, can you invite other folks from your team that have an exhibitor pass or do they have to have a partnering account? That's a very good question. If you are hosting partnering meetings in your pavilion and if you have colleagues who have an exhibitor booth personnel badge, they can join the meeting and physically participate, although they won't be officially listed on the meeting or in your partnering calendar because they won't have a login to access the partnering system. So they can be present, but they won't have actual access to the system. When is the last meeting matching session? So meeting scheduling will begin in mid-May, as we discussed earlier, and will continue. It goes on just about every day during the weekdays mostly, or every other day, and continues even through convention. So meetings are just about always being scheduled. Let's see here and see if there are any other questions. How beneficial have you found that partnering is for consulting companies and service providers? Well, we've really seen a great question, Stephanie. We've seen a lot of success for a variety of consultants and service providers who are able to secure many meetings. I would refer you back to the point again of customize, 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 really target those meeting requests as much as possible. If a meeting is scheduled in a particular zone, like the Innovation Zone, will a specific location be assigned within the zone area, or is it up to the participants to find a free area? Great question. There will be a specific area always in the pavilions and in the exhibit areas, so you don't have to walk in and kind of get lost. You will see each of them is lettered. There's a very particular naming system that we have, so just match up what you have on your calendar with the signs that you see around the tables, and you'll easily be able to find your meeting location. You mentioned that you must submit the number of meeting points you want to have by April 23rd if you are an exhibitor. The question is, what's the benefit of multiple meeting points? Great question. So multiple meeting points allows you to have more meetings if you are an exhibitor. If you only have one meeting point, that means in any given 30-minute time slot, your company can have one meeting. If you have two meeting points, subject to your square footage, depending on your size, then you're able to have two meetings during any one time slot. But keep in mind that your number of you cannot have a meeting, meeting a million meeting points. That's not possible. It's not enough space. So there are square footage regulations. Generally, one meeting point per 100 square feet. Can exhibitors view all of the attendees or just those who are in exhibitor partnering? Great question. Well, you can view a variety of things in different areas. So if you're interested in seeing people who are participating in partnering, you can do that either in the partnering system, of course, or in my bio. And you can also view more detailed lists of attendees in my bio as well. Can exhibitors schedule meetings in the meeting rooms? Uh, the question there, so exhibitor meetings will all take place in the individual exhibit booth or either in the pavilion. That is completely separate, however, from the business form. So only those with convention access and partnering access will be able to have their meetings and be allowed into the business form. All right. Well, we have some uh, other questions here, but if you continue to have questions, please shoot those over to biopartnering at bio.org. 
And be sure to register for our Partnering Advanced Power Tools webinar that's taking place on May 2nd. So in that webinar, I'll be going through some more advanced features and enhancements and some other really nitty-gritty things to help you maximize your partnering experience. We hope to see you and look forward to seeing you at the 2019 Bio International Convention in Philadelphia, where it starts with one. And we hope that you are one of the many thousands that are participating and that you're able to drive amazing success from your convention experience. Thank you all so very much and keep in mind again that a recording to of this webinar and the slides will be sent out following the webinar. We look forward to seeing you in just about two months in Philadelphia and have a great day.